Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, I'm going to be ranking all 39 brawlers in the meta currently. So, I mean, it's already been, I believe, well over a week since the very big balance changes that dropped. Plus the introduction of Colette. So, I've had a good uh, idea of the meta. Obviously, I'm number one in the world at the moment. So, I've probably played the most out of anyone with this new meta with scrims and stuff like that. So, I feel like I've got really good understanding so far. So, yeah, I'm just going to be giving you my reasonings between all of this. Obviously... Uh, depending on your guys' trophy ranges, it probably won't match up to what you think. Uh, but this is just really high uh, trophy mainly because, as you can see, most of my brawlers are like above 1k. And also scrims, uh, obviously I've got the monthly finals coming up, so it's going to be literally the top tier ranking this, this will be. So let's hop into it. Alright, so jumping in at dead last, number 39, it's going to be Shelly. So Shelly has received a couple of decent buffs. I think her HP actually got... Uh, buffed and a couple of other things the small tweaks which actually uh, made her better but with tanks actually being much worse in this meta and basically a lot of tank heavy maps were removed out of the game shelly's only really good at in one map in the entire game at the moment that's sneaky fields every other map she's not really the best and she's not good in gem grab not good in heist not good in bouncy the only mode she's going to be really good in is probable and she basically just really sucks at the moment okay guys so jumping in at number 38 it's going to be dynamite no real surprises here dynamite just Never really be as good. His gadget I've actually got used to. It's actually uh, been fixed now. It actually uh, stuns people correctly. But uh, yeah, it's just not going to be good anywhere. I mean, he's decent in Siege. He's decent in Heist. Decent in Brubble. Uh, but I just feel like in this meta, he's still not going to be the best. So at number 37, it's going to be Jesse. So Jesse, you know, has always been in like the bottom five brawlers. Uh, but it's actually much easier to push her now if you're actually decent with Jesse. You can push her really high. I feel like I'll push Jesse to rank 35 pretty easily in this meta because it's pretty balanced. But in terms of competitive gameplay, Jesse's only really good on a couple of maps. She's actually really good on the new maps that have came in, the highest ones, Kaboom Canyon and Safe Zone. They're definitely her best maps in the game. She's going to be a decent mid in gem grab. She's going to be okay in Brawl as well. Uh, but yeah, competitively, not really going to be in the top brawler rankings. All right, so coming in at number 36 is going to be Leon. So you guys got to realize that uh, Showdown isn't in this competitive tier list at all. That's one of Leon's best modes for sure. But uh, to be honest, Unladder, uh, the only really good mode you're going to be seeing him in much is probably uh, Brubble. You're going to be seeing him in a bit of Jam Grab. Every other mode, I uh, won't really use him in at all. And he's got really good synergy with Gene. That's probably like the only good synergy I can see working in any type of competitive format. But yeah, Leon's just really not good. It will never ever be used in a competitive format unless it's for uh, just trolling around really. So at number 35, we have Crow. So again, another brawler that's going to be decent in showdown, but not in 3v3 modes at all. His best mode at the moment, I'll probably say gem grab. I've seen a couple of pro players uh, push their rank 35 Crows in maps like Undermine, Double Swoosh. Other gem grab maps is pretty decent and you can actually keep a good distance and keep chipping brawlers down like Spike. Spike's really prevalent in the meta and Crow can be pretty decent against him. Uh, but yeah, he's just not going to be good in competitive at all. Uh, but yeah, his best gadget is uh, definitely the shield one and inside a brawl ball, that's going to be a really good combination. So at number 34 in the list, it's going to be Nita. So Nita, I'll put my hands up. I got it completely wrong. I thought she was going to be really OP in the meta. And she's literally the exact opposite. She's hot trash in the meta. And it's mainly due to her gadget. So her gadget has a one second delay on. It makes it near enough impossible to actually get a stun on. Because once you press that gadget, the bear actually stands still. And then the stun goes off. Uh, the only way you're going to get that stun off is if someone just completely like goes AFK. Or if you, uh, the brawler's on top of you, you're able to get that stun off. But Nita actually got some good buffs. Other than that, uh, you're able to get your bear with one less hit. You're also able to uh, cycle your bear much quicker. So if they fix the gadget, maybe bring it back to two like before. I feel like I should be in a pretty decent spot in the middle. All right, so number 33 is going to be Colt. And again, a brawler that hasn't really been better for a long time. He's one of them brawlers that aren't touched very regularly. But uh, with the introduction of two new maps, he's going to be much better in the meta. Save Zone and Kaboom Canyon. Kaboom Canyon is by far going to be his best map. If you're looking to push Colt, definitely push him on this map. Probably would say he's a top five brawler on that map. He's absolutely insane. If you've got some good aim, but obviously this brawler is a really high skill, skill cap brawler. Takes really good aim to play him, but uh, he's just not the best in a competitive battle. So coming in at number 32, it's going to be 8-bit. And he finally isn't in the bottom 5 at brawlers overall. And that is definitely due to his new star power. So I, I said in quite a few videos that the extra life star power had to be removed for him to actually get some viability in the meta. Just because 
uh, his balance shouldn't be based off showdown at all. And the only reason why I was good in showdown was because of that star power. Now he's got this star power, which enables him to move really, really fast. And it's got a really big range on it. And that definitely makes him much better. It's going to be a really good mid, uh, to be honest. But the reason why he's not high on the list uh, is that the turret can just get taken out really easily. And it's pretty hard to get that turret. So it's just literally dependent on his turret. Maybe if the star power uh, made him faster overall, it would be pretty decent. But again, he's still not going to be the complete best in the metal so number 31 it's going to be gale so gale was a top five brawler for a very long time now he's received a couple of nerfs and with the recent nerf to his gadget it's completely killed him near enough because he was one of the best brawlers in heist and siege now you can't use that gadget to good affection so maybe if the second gadget comes out and it's better than this one he might get some new life in the meta but in scrims i literally don't see him anywhere other than one map at the moment which is gg mortary i think it's called it's just decent overall though uh, you can actually push him pretty decently on like brewable gem grab but uh, it's just not going to be the best in this metal so number 30 is going to be penny so i think penny's been one of the most balanced brawlers in the game for a very long time i don't feel like this needs to be much that needs to change about her she's really good at pushing overall in a ladder you can play her on a bunch of gem grab maps as mid you can play her on brewable on a few maps siege on a few maps as well uh, but in terms of competitive meta i don't really see feel like you're going to be seeing her at all in any maps at the moment and that's one of the main reasons why she's so low so 29 it's going to be el primo and the main reason for this is because you're not going to be seeing a ton of tanks uh, on ladder at the moment it's a really anti-tank meta and el primo is only good when other tanks thrive because he's the best tank in that regard he counters every other tank in the game so when it's not other tanks involved el primo is going to be really bad in the meta and that's mainly due to his range uh, being really bad uh, of course, he's only really good on like sneaky maps that have a lot of bushes in, like sneaky fields, like center stage is pretty uh, okay. And but overall, our promo is just not really the best in this metal. Right, so at number twenty-eight, it's going to be Rosa. So Rosa really hasn't been meta for a very long time. Obviously, she's really good paired with Poco, but uh, Rosa you can actually play it on a lot of bushy maps. There's been a couple of maps introduced that are really bushy, like sneaky fields. I like playing her on hard rock mine as well. She's only going to be kind of decent in the meta, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of counters to her but i feel like you can push her on her own without poke and that's one of the main reasons why she's placed a bit higher than the likes of Prim. so number 27 is going to be ems and i know i said that ems is only really good uh, when tanks are in play which is pretty true but ems slowly is creeping back in, into the meta she's actually pretty viable on a lot of probable maps she's pretty good in gem grab as well and uh, people are just slowly learning how to use her uh, with the gadget nerf which happened quite a few months ago but people are obviously have st slowly starting to use her and uh, yeah, she's pretty decent in this metal. So number 26 is going to be Piper. So Piper's really not in the best place in the meta at the moment. Other than the introduction of a few maps, especially Bounty. So maps like Shooting Star, she's probably the best brawler on that map. Dry Season, Overgrown, Oasis. They're three really good Piper maps that have been reintroduced into the game. The main reason why she's not completely meta at the moment is because of brawlers like Sprout and Mortis. Sprout can just easily beat her in mid, literally free tapping. Uh, her, especially with his shield and gadget and then mortis is just a really good counter to her at the moment at 25 it's going to be frank so frank before the changes used to be like a top 10 brawler for sure it could even been used on modes like bounty because of how heavy well how, how tank heavy the meta was but now with all the uh, small buffs to other brawlers allowing them to get supers quicker frank just gets counted way too much in this meta and with the introduction of colette as well she's so many different tank counters frank's still going to be decent in like brawlable and pretty good in gem grab but overall he's definitely took a big beating in the metal so bull is coming in at number 24 and uh bull has actually got a recent buff as well i think to his hp which is going to make him a bit better uh but just overall i feel like bull's a really good tank especially in heist probably one of the best tanks in heist on maps like pit stop on sandy gems bull is just really good on their maps he's going to be pretty decent in brubble other game modes not going to be the best, but I just feel like he's a pretty strong brawler in the meta at the moment. So at 23, it's going to be Daryl. So another brawler that got a small uh, health buff. Daryl's going to be pretty good in this meta. His best modes for sure are going to be brawl and heist. All the other modes it's not going to be the best in. But maps that are new to the game again, like um, GG Corral, he's really good in safe zone. He's amazing in Kaboom Canyon. He's so good in as well. All of his new maps are going to be really helping him twist and shoot as well. All of his new maps are going to be really helping him in the meta and probably one of the best tanks in the game. So Rico's going to be at number 22 and Rico's never really been like a really strong or OP brawler uh, in the meta for a very long time. He's just decent across all modes. He's really good in brawl, good in gem grab, 
good in heist. He's not good in bounty and siege, really, but he's just a really good dependable overall brawler and he's super, super versatile. Uh, as I said, he's really good against tanks. He's pretty good against the longer range units as well and just overall a very balanced brawler. So at number 21 is going to be Tick. So Tick recently got a buff as well. He's able to uh, cycle his supers much quicker. But again, with the introduction of quite a few bounty maps, Tick's going to be even better. Maps like Shooting Star, when he's in the mid, he's the best mid brawler behind that wall. You've got maps like Dry Season, Overgrown Oasis, XL, Canal Grande, literally all of these bounty maps, he's one of the best brawlers in. Bounty is definitely his best mode. But also because of his recent buff, he can push him in game modes like Siege and Brawl Siege on ladder, you can push him pretty well. It's not going to be the best in competitive, but on ladder, you can definitely push Tick there. And as I said, Brawl Ball as well. So 20, it's going to be Jackie. So Jackie is really good in Brawl Ball and Bounty at the moment. The main reason putting Jackie is so high because uh, she can obviously play without uh, Poco and whatnot. And also really good against other Brawlers that are much higher on the uh, list like Mortis. She's really good at counter to Mortis. Uh, in Bounty, she's really good counter to Throwers and whatnot. And just really good dependable Brawler overall. So at 19, it's going to be Brock and another brawler that's actually gotten much better in the meta literally because of new maps that have gone uh came back into the game so these are maps like kaboom canyon safe zone brock is probably not the best brawler inside of that mode uh, but inside of them maps gg corral as well he's so so good there also the new bounty maps like shooting star he's really good in dry season overgrown oasis all of these maps are really favored towards brock uh, before these maps were introduced brock wasn't really in a good place at all in meta there was a lot of tanks uh, a lot of counters like Carl. Uh, he's just destroying him on lane. But now he's definitely getting better in the meta. So at 18, it's going to be Sandy. So Sandy's slowly getting back into the meta again. Uh, this is due to the fact of these new maps again. Brubble, there's only seven maps. So I mentioned this a lot. Uh, new maps like Center Stage, Sneaky Fields, Beach Ball. Uh, they're really popular maps. And that's when Sandy used to be good in the meta. And these maps definitely favor Sandy a lot because of the bushes, the little peat shots. It's really good for Sandy. Uh, there's brawlers in the meta like Spike that Sandy can just free shot once he's able to get his super. Just really, really good. His best modes are definitely going to be a gem grab and a brawl ball. So 17 on the list is going to be BB. I feel like BB is a really balanced brawler in the meta so far. A lot of times in competitive, BB batting stand style power is used to counter the opposition just because she's really tanky, especially with that gadget. It's a really good combination. Uh, her best mode is going to be probably Siege and Heist. She's really good in the modes and quite a lot of different maps. She's going to be really good in Brawl as well. Very decent in Gem Grab and OK and Bounty as well. I feel like the Baton Stance BB star power is so good. So at number 16, it's going to be Surge. So a lot of people might be actually surprised about this. And that's mainly due to the fact that his first star power, I think it was to the max, uh, got heavily, heavily nerfed within the last set of balance changes. So... Is uh, other star power, the ice cold one, the one that people didn't use. I think it's something like uh, called like that. Uh, so whenever you die, uh, you keep that second upgrade when you respawn. So it's really, really important. You can basically keep getting that third upgrade, which is the be the other one you really need. You don't really need that max upgrade all the time. It's all about getting that third one. But Surge is really good in the meta, in my opinion, especially competitive meta. You're going to see a lot of him, I believe, in the monthly finals. And it's mainly due to his TP. He can just be so aggressive. And brawlers like Spike that are really good in meta like Cole. You could just feed his levels off really easily. And people really underestimate how much damage he does. It does 1,500 every single shot. And he's a decent brawler in the meta. So number 15 is going to be B. And I feel like B is a really balanced brawler at the moment. Obviously, it's not really a ton of tanks in the meta. But B is still a really solid option as a mid in Brawl And Gem Grab there are going to be her best modes for sure. But I said, I just feel like B is really, really balanced at the moment. It requires a bit of skill. Uh, to actually play her and what if you're really good at playing B you can completely dominate She's definitely one of the best mids in the game So number 14, it's going to be nanny and nanny is probably one of the highest skill cap brawlers in the game In my opinion, it's really hard to hit shots with her So maybe in the low trophy range, she's really bad But in high trophy range when people are really good in competitive, she absolutely dominates She's one of the best mids in the game in gem grab in brawl ball. She's really good in that mid as well in game modes like Heist, you actually see her quite uh, used a lot in Safe Zone, uh, Kaboom Canyon. She's actually used a ton there. And I just absolutely love playing Nanny. Uh, just a really fun brawler to play. And as I said, it actually takes a lot of skill to consistently hit shots all the time. And if you're going to be able to get good at doing that, Nanny's going to be a devastating brawler. So Claire is going to be the 13th best brawler in my opinion in the meta. Uh, it's going to be a bit of confusion to see where she actually lies in the meta. 
Uh, maybe in like a few weeks time we will actually see her true strength or true weaknesses but again a lot of people really haven't unlocked her on the battle pass at the moment i feel like she's a pretty strong brawler especially in competitive you can't really go tanks anymore when collects in play because she can literally uh shoot two uh shots onto a tank and then super and just kill anyone so i feel like in time we'll start to learn how good Claire is okay guys so coming in at number 12 it's going to be mortis and at the moment i absolutely despise this brawler i see him all the time in brawl even more so uh now with the recent buff so if you guys didn't know uh the buff so it's actually a really big change people uh on the front of it I think it's only a small change but uh the super recharge rate actually got a buff so instead before uh if you hit two people with your bats you needed three swipes to get your super again now, if you hit two people with your bats, you only need two more dashes to get your super back again. This means that uh, Mortis can chain his bats so much more. He can heal up so much more with this change. And uh, as I said, he's been running it everywhere on Brawl Ladder. I've been facing double Mortis so, so much. Uh, inside of Gem Grab, he's really good. Bounty, really good. So Mortis, I feel like, is going to be such a good brawler in this meta. So 11 on the list is going to be Poco. So Poco used to be a top 5 brawler. Obviously, he receives a small nerf but mainly the reason why he's actually dropped so far down the list is because brawlers around him have received a buff so obviously this indirectly nerfs him uh because of his counterparts uh the reason why he's in the meta is because of tanks and if other brawlers are better at destroying tanks that obviously means that poker is going to be worse in the meta i know that sounds a little bit confusing but it would make sense in terms of how the brawl meta kind of works uh but yeah poker's still going to be really good and to be honest in competitive play a lot in scrims he's going to be the main ban just for that reason so number 10 on the list is going to be mr p so mr p's always been a decent brawler in the meta to be honest uh, he wasn't really good in the last meta though because of all the poco double tank comps again you're not going to be seeing too much of that anymore but still i feel like he's not as strong as he could be i've not really faced too many problems especially in competitive he's not really used uh too too much on ladder he's actually really good got a really good win rate on game modes like gem grab Rubble, he's really good in but overall he's just a really solid pick so number nine is pam so pam uh, on ladder to be honest is a really easy ruler to push but in competitive pam is an absolute monster she's so good in the competitive meta inside of gem grab she's really good siege in a select few maps she's really good Rubble, she's going to be good i mean she's probably good everywhere even on uh bounty to be honest she can be used there heist she can be used there she's literally good across every single game mode it's mainly due to her uh high hp she's really good at countering i have lots of sprout other throwers she uh, can counter tanks pretty well because she has high dps she's just a really good brawler overall so coming in at number eight is going to be bali and the main reason for this is because he's so dominant on siege he's definitely the best brawler inside of siege he's got two really good gadgets he got one for healing that most people use on siege so it heals up the whole team uh, 500 per second i believe it is he's really good on brubble he's really good on gem grab Bol is just such a good brawler overall obviously he's really vulnerable to tanks and the likes of mortis when he's using that other gadget that doesn't slow enemies around him uh, but when you've got that slow one you can counter tanks really well so it's just a really good balanced hybrid brawler at the moment so coming in at number seven on the list it's going to be tara so it's been a, quite a while since tara's became so meta but Tara on ladder is absolutely amazing. Competitive, she's really good as well. So this is mainly due to the fact because, again, because of these new maps that came into the game, you've got uh, maps like Crystal Arcade, she's amazing in. Undermine, she's really good in. Double Swoosh, these are some of her best gem grab maps. And then you've got Brubble, you've got the likes of Sneaky Fields, she's really good at scouting the grass there. Center Stage, she's the best brawler there. You've got Sunny Soccer. Again, it's just all of these maps are just so suited to her. A lot of grass a lot of good opportunities to use your super she's received a buff as well you're able to charge your super back much quicker again so yeah she's definitely becoming better at the minute so coming in at number six it's going to be gene and everyone knows by now surely that i absolutely love this brawler uh, one of my favorite brawlers to play and one of the brawlers i'm best in really really from brawler to play but yeah gene is just really good in the meta at the moment his best mode is going to be uh probably siege i would say siege definitely his best mode actually and then brubble gem grab really good and it could be pretty solid in bounty as well the only mode you can't play him in is heist but yeah received a small buff but actually a big buff in the uh, last set of changes it now takes three just three hits to get a super instead of three hits and a tiny bit this enables him to cycle his pull much much quicker so before you used to be able to pull someone at max range move backwards and only get uh, and get three shots on them but not get your super back but now you can do that so you don't have to waste another ammo getting your super back and it's just such a good synergy brawler synergizes well with all of the top brawlers in the meta one of the best mids in the game definitely a top six brawler 
So number five on the list is going to be Sprout. And to be honest, I want to put Sprout a bit higher, but a lot of people might be confused. Uh, but Sprout is absolutely amazing in a competitive meta at the moment. In Bounty, he's used on pretty much every single Bounty map. Even on Snake Priory, he's used there. He's so, so good. It's mainly due to the fact that he actually counters the longer range brawlers. He can like three or four shot them easily. His overgrowth star power is so broken combined with his gadget. He can be really good in bounty. Again with gem grab, he counters a lot of the mids like Nanny, like Piper. He counters them really well. Obviously, his big struggle is going to be tanks. But in competitive, you can ban Poco and then Sprout will be really good. He's also good on the lane on maps like Minecraft Madness. And he's really good uh, mid as well. He can be a really good hybrid brawler. Rubble, again, he's going to be really good there. He's just so good everywhere because of brawlers like Spike as well. Spike's one of the best uh, brawlers in the game, but Sprout can free tap him across the map, so that's why he's going to be so much better in the meta, and that's why he's number five. So coming in at number four, it's going to be Bow, and there should be no surprises here. His gadget still hasn't been touched. His tripwire gadget is completely broken, and it's probably the only reason why he's so good in the meta. So the main reason for this in gem grab literally every single mid i see mainly i see bow because of his mines are so dominant on so many different maps you can just throw your mines and people just can't run towards them because it just cuts off such a huge choke point on the map and a lot of the time you can just throw uh, mines on people just instantly activate them with the gadget cycle them over and over again you can deal up to like 6k damage you can stun up multiple targets bow is just such a good brawler in the meta at the moment good across every single mode so carl is coming in at number three and everyone knows how strong he is he hasn't been touched for a long while now and one of the best brawlers in the meta for sure brawl is going to be his best mode in my opinion and then like gem grab you can even play him on siege you can even play him on bounty uh even on heist you can play him everywhere he's a really good solid balanced hybrid brawler he deals with tanks really well he shreds them down he's really good at getting uh the mid-range brawlers down he's just such good lane there's not going to be much better lanes than him in the game at the moment and yeah, to be honest, not really much more to say. Everyone knows how good he is and it definitely is in need of a nerf. Okay, guys, so the second best brawler in the game, in my opinion, is going to be Spike. So he's running absolutely rampage on ladder at the moment. Every single brawl ball map I'm playing, even on the long range map like Backyard Bowl, people are using curveball there. He's so dominant in brawl ball at the minute. Probably the best lane in the game. And that's mainly because of his new buff. It's actually insane damage at the moment. Before his best mode used to be Heist and he's going to be even better there as well with his buff. He's going to be really good on Siege taking down that Siege robot. The only mode he's not going to be good on is Bounty. He's going to be amazing his gem grab down the lane with Curveball. You can switch between star powers depending on uh, how you prefer to play. If you like to play a bit more aggressive, use Fertilize, heal up, destroy them tanks. If, uh, if you're afraid of the longer range units, you can use Curveball. Have definitely really good moments. Okay guys, so the best brawler in the game, no surprises here at all it's going to be max she's by far the best brawler in the game at the moment and that's mainly just because she's just so good in every game mode except for bouncy brubble she's going to be really good you get her supers really quick with the recent buff and she just absolutely shreds through people she's such a good synergy brawler and i'm just seeing her everywhere in ladder high she's going to be amazing in siege she's going to be amazing in gem grab she's going to be so good in uh within scrims mostly most people ban max and that just goes to show how good of a brawler she is uh, as I said, in high trophy ladder, I see her so much on the lane. She can deal with tanks really well. She can deal with literally every single brawler really well. She's got a really good gadget. She's just perfect in this meta and, it, and is definitely in need of an earth. Okay, guys, this is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Let me know that down in the comment section below what you thought of my tier list. As I said, I, I would say I probably put the most time into this game at the moment out of literally everybody in the world because obviously I'm number one in the world. And I've been scrimming at a ton ready for the monthly finals. So I feel like this is a pretty accurate list. Obviously, it could have been a bit more accurate going into each like game mode, going into like a bunch of different stuff. But I feel like this is a well-balanced tier list. But yeah, let me know how it did in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.